It is six o'clock. Ollie Ollie and Cup Free. Uh, my name is Dave Stevens. I've been asked to chair this special act charter drafting committee. Uh, I'll ask people to go around the room and introduce themselves, please. Steve Holder, Colin Sunday, Mass. He is our facilitator for this process. Richard Green, Ward 7. Mark Warner, Ward 5. Tom Thompson, Ward 2. Ty Miranda, Ward 6. Patty Weaver, Glenn Chat, Ward 3. Uh, Bill Sher, Ward 4. Megan Murphy Wolf, uh, Ward I mean, at large, I guess. But <laughs> Uh, welcome. Uh, this is the public comment portion. I uh, ask for anyone from the public who'd like to comment, and if the, bil the filmographer would like to introduce himself. Uh, uh, I'm Lachlan Ziegler, recording for the North Street Association. And this will be posted on their website. If yep, would like correct. To, uh, go to their website just to review anything that was discussed tonight. We appreciate North Street for stepping forward and doing that for us. Um, any other public comment at this time? Moving forward. A um, couple of things that did come up. I received a request from an individual to also post these on a separate website. I'm going to suggest that they post a link on that website to the website that, that um, Mary has established. Because when you get two websites, sometimes you have uh, information that gets posted on one doesn't get posted on the other. It gets a little confusing. But if they post a link, it will just take them right to the website that the city has, and the city will keep all the information, since this is public uh, information in one location, which I think is the best way to do it. If there are other uh, people who are interested in parties, I would suggest you post the link as opposed to trying to download information. So far, this is what has been uh, part of this committee, so it, it will be a lot of information, and it's very easy to miss a document as we go through, so I think it's better to have a central and single place to do it. I hope the committee is in concurrence with that concept. So if anybody's interested from around, then you would just uh, post the link that Mary sent around to us uh, earlier in the week uh, as for your, your organizations that you might be representing or participating in. Any other comments on that or any questions? Or it, it, This sort of dovetails with the email Mary sent around uh, this afternoon about um, blog not being... Well, that is, will be part of the okay. discussion okay. later in the, in the, the piece about the... the the separates between the web and the blog okay. and how we want to handle that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to add that at the bottom of the agenda when we talk about public hearing and securing public comment, okay. since that is part of that particular process. The other thing that, I, that came up um, uh, in some of the discussions, and I'm, I appreciate that everybody was emailing and making sure that everybody stayed on the email list, because remember we are in, in uh, open meeting laws, that all that information is public. Um, one of the areas that, that got into discussion and was the areas of, of compensation and who was compensated and who wasn't. Um, I get a little nervous in that area, um, uh, or how many people were taking this benefit and weren't taking this benefit. Management 101 taught me that you create a position and you create the benefits for that position um, regardless of the personality involved, and we make decisions based on what's best for that position. Um, and not get into <coughs> personalities involved. Elections could change that. So I'm, I'm more concerned that that we would create um, and discuss, as you see a number, I think number two or, or was up there, um, of our items, is this the correct benefit package, salary and benefits for the individuals involved, and not get into is it being utilized by people or not being utilized, because it, it, that will change every election. So I just. I, I know, Todd, if you want to respond now, to that. But. Yeah, I think the reason I was asking was it, it's, not, it's not information that's out there in the public domain, right. at least I'm right. aware of. And I didn't want to ask you know, which individual counselors used, but I wanted to get a global sense of what the expense it, was it, yeah. to the city. And I think uh, that's relevant for the discussion. Exactly. Right? So I just didn't want the conversation to go much further than that because yeah. no, um, uh, I just don't see it's relevant that. Councilor X is taking the benefits and Councilor Y is not taking the benefit. It is public record. If anybody wants to find that, they can find that from HR. But I don't think that's how you make a management decision. A management decision is based on should that salary package and compensation package be offered to this job, school committee or city council. And I, I would just like to steer us, make sure, which I think is where Todd is going, yeah. but I, I wanted to make sure that that, that was clarified by everybody. If everybody's comfortable with that. Any further comment on that piece? Then uh, the agenda was posted and sent to you. 
Our first or second item on the agenda is school governance and other elected officials. And I'll ask for our facilitator, Steve, to uh, begin us through this process. Remember, uh, as a side note, we are working towards now a November 15th public hearing, 6.30 to 9.30 in this particular facility space. Um, we, uh, Mary, you had the question starting. Uh, there's a, a, a question that we could post. These are the tentative questions that we, we have came up with last meeting. We will obviously add to that as we go through the, the next two meetings. And we can clean these, the language up if you're not comfortable with the language. But this is what we want the public to come back and comment on for that particular piece. We'll talk more about that in Agenda 4. So let's begin with school governance. And very open as to last time. Uh, raise your hand for what you recognize. And we can keep the discussion going. Steve, start us off. OK. Um, on the school committee, uh, some of the decisions are, are much the same um, um, that we need to make for the legislative body. Except for the school committee's powers and duties, we can't really do much with them because it really most of them are just statutory. Um, the every reform law changed the whole balance of of, of, um, of power between uh, the government and the schools and who runs the schools and gives the superintendent all sorts of authority. So you really can't keep delve into that power and duties very much. What you need to what you need to decide, just like the legislative body, is the composition. Do you want to change the composition? Or do you want to keep them at large or by board? Um, should the mayor be on it? Should the mayor chair it? Those are the basic decisions that need to get made on the, on the composition. The other thing is the term of office. Um, do you want it to two or four? And um, and how to fill a vacancy. Um, and the filling of the vacancy is as much the same as as in the legislative body because we try to keep these consistent throughout the document. If there's a if there's a vacancy in the city council, and there's a process for that vacancy to, to fill that that seat. The process for the vacancy on the school committee should be basically the same. Um, so, we, you know, it's, it's, that's, those are the major decision points you need to make on school committee. So let's start giving some opinions on this particular piece. Mark? Is there a question you had sent around to in the comparison of the school yep. committees, the table? Uh, is there anything about the, um, that would distinguish those towns that have information listed from those that don't? Was it just that that wasn't available? It, um, this was a work in progress. And you know, getting this information is kind of uh, is, 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 is time consuming, and we just never got to finish this chart. So I, I try to go through what I have from the Association of School Superintendents and the School uh, Committees the other day and filled in about you know ten more of these myself. But I couldn't. It's nothing. It's nothing to do with who doesn't have the information. It's just we, we didn't have time to fill it in. But so taking that one step further, if there are towns of similar size composition and we would like to follow up on that, we could do that as well as part of the purview of this committee. We'll just make a call. Right. Well, can I, can I I'll follow up on that then? You know, in looking at these, obviously, you know, population is something that would be a frame of reference you can compare Northampton to, but does Northampton have a general set of, of peers that it, it compares itself to? Uh, locally, if, if I were to, 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 to choose a few, I mean, Agalong and West Springfield are both within the, the population. Yeah. A range. Both of them, by the way, are missing data. Yeah. <laughs> are, are, are West Hampton, um, I mean, they're the Western Mass kind of centric um, pieces, but those would be the two that would jump out to me when I think about Merrill fun form of government with city council with about 30,000, give or take, population. Uh, Greenfield being a little bit smaller, Pittsfield being a little bit larger, Holyoke and, and Chicopee are larger yet again. And they're going to be seven and nine, I'll tell you that right now. Because you're not going to get anything, more than seven, anything less than seven, any more than nine. And this is on the school committee we're yes. talking about. So a couple have ten, but not many. So does our ten include the mayor? Yes. Yes. Which makes it an even number. Which is, you know, I uh, 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 an even number. It's ten. Yeah. I mean, but makes it, yeah. You know, so, so, yeah. <laughs> so you need there's, there's a bunch of a bunch of cities around here, 1984 to 1986. All past special acts to put the mayor on the school committee to make it the tenth member. So there might—I don't know if that was a coordinated activity or what—but um, in in um, in, in, uh, in Holyoke, when we just finished up with the ten, we, we decided to keep it at ten. Um, and from what I hear, anecdotally here, that it's, it hasn't been a problem with a tie vote on the school committee ever. So I don't know if that's. Do you know? You know more than I know, but. It could, obviously it can cause a stalemate, because you could have a tie vote. 
Um, how could I get my broken record of competitive election? Uh, do you know um, if, if, if other cities are all elected positions or so no point to all, all elected except for Boston. And most by at large, not by one. And what's the thinking as to the ideal number? Um, is, is there a size beyond which you know, things get unwieldy or it's hard to manage a large committee? Well, it's hard to manage a large committee no matter what it is. <laughs> but um, yeah, this is just a, you know, this is just how, the, how it happened in Massachusetts. It just ended up seven or nine. History, if like you look it. across the nation, is there a best practice for the size? I guess that's what I'm getting at. Is I, I have no reference for. Um, I could I could I could do some research on that, but um, I, I I don't know the answer to the question right off the top of my head. Nationally, what's you know, what's the, what's the practice? Let's just see if there is a if that if you could just find that out for us. If yeah. there's a um, uh, best practice that that uh, is out there nationally. Uh, obviously, ours represents one from each ward and two at large, mayor being the tenth vote, which is uh, different than city council, where the mayor does not vote but still runs the meeting currently. Okay. So, Richard? how long has the mayor um, had a vote? Uh, I can remember when Dave Muzan was mayor, like he never chaired the meetings, right? They left them pretty much on their own. So, this happened. This happened after that. Well, no. he gave could, he, he, could be just in the shop. Yeah, he did. Uh, well, my understanding was, the vote, uh, my, my belief was that he had the vote, and, and Dave didn't exercise that. And that was one of the things that Mary ran on, if I believe it's correct. Mary Ford ran that she was going to go to the city council meetings and chair the meetings. Okay, and that was her. Uh, so it wasn't changed for Mary. It was already part of the law. He just didn't do it. And she exercised that right to run the meetings. Claire followed through. So we've had basically two decades of mayors running the, the school committee. Um, I had a conversation with uh, Councilor Schwartz today about this, and she, just to be a, a pass along her message, she thought that whatever we did in regards to the mayor, she had a strong view whether the mayor should chair or not, but she thought the mayor should be there and should have a vote. Um, so she just didn't want to do it. I'm not, not sure her word is, is law, but just told her that she'd give it to um, council. Okay. Yeah, my experience in, 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 in this, uh, this issue from a mayor's perspective. Um, a mayor's perspective is if I'm going to be on the school committee, I'm going to chair it. That's what a mayor would say to you. Because, you know, I'm the mayor. <laughs> and I don't want to be, you know, I, I don't want to be just one vote because, you know, I'm, I was elected mayor and I want to be chair. I'm not going to go meet That's so, a mayor's perspective. So some, most of it's Right. So there's options of the mayor voting and chairing, the mayor just voting. And the mayor not uh, being physically on either as well. That's the three options I'm hearing line, line up here. Now, if the mayor was not chair, mm -hmm. but voting, but, but was, uh, separate, would the chair either get compensation because of the extra workload? The chair of city council gets extra compensation. So would, would that have to? I mean, obviously, we know if we want, but would it make sense to do that for school committee if we're taking the mayor out of that role? I, again, we are setting up a, a new uncharted territory here. That would be for uh, here for public comment on that, and then to make a recommendation to the city council. So, sorry, that was one of the decision points I did mention about compensation. Right. So, yeah. obvious. Do you, do you know of situations in other towns where the, the mayor is not the chair? Is it presumed that the chair would get compensated then? Um, or do people do it out of their goodness, do, do the extra work out of goodness to the harvest? I, I, a lot of school committees aren't compensated at all. Right. Or if they're compensated, they get like $1,500 a year or something like that. You know, and, 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 and it is common for the, for the chair to get more, a little bit more, but it's like $500 or something. It's not, you know, it's not a lot. School committees are not paid that much money. Todd? Well, I would just make an observation. I, I've been in Northampton for eight years and have been watching the school committee meetings. And during the difficult period with the previous superintendent, Without the mayor there, with her institutional knowledge, I'm not sure if those meetings would ever have ended or proceeded. Um, and if she was a, if she, any mayor would be a resource to understand all the different pieces moving in the city. So, excluding the mayor from the committee, I think, would be problematic um, um, because he or she has a huge knowledge base. Mark, 
I, I kind of agree with Todd, but I, I wonder if this is also an issue where you're talking about the individual personality instead of the position. And it could be that you would have somebody else who I mean, should have a, another mayor who should have a concern about the school committee, given the role of the schools, given the role of you know, the dimensions of the schools relative to the overall city governance. But it's, uh, but you could theoretically have somebody who's, oh, well, actually, my, my focus is elsewhere, and that we've just been lucky the so far to have such an engaged The school budget is more than 50% of the Northampton budget, just so we're, we keep that in mind. Uh, other comments up in this territory? Again, we're not making decisions. We just don't want to air where we're coming from. We're going to then solicit public comment on this. And uh, Mark? Well, I do have one more about this. Given that, you know, I think this is an interesting point about the potential for a tie when you have 10 people, it, it, it seems, you know, and also when you look at this, it's that there's clearly a preponderance of mayor on school committee on this list here, but then why not just drop one of the at-large? Mm -hmm. Everybody would still have access to a representative through his or her ward, but, you know, would that be um, a reasonable? Uh, you could also, uh, yeah, well, well, there'll be people who are down, maybe right. you could go, I think they were competitive elections. Right now, we're not competitive school committee election. Uh, I don't think it's going to be right. an anomaly going forward. Let's say you went all, you went all at large, so you would do a redrawing of board boundaries. You had six at large plus mayor, and you'd have seven. So you'd at least be cutting down mm -hmm. uh, the number, and maybe get some more competitive elections out there. And then the, the, the converse of that is, for instance, why Holyoke just, or Springfield, went from all at large city councilors to um, ward representation was that they wanted more people um, from the neighborhoods because what happened was that everybody was uh, living in Forest Park at the time and some of the other neighborhoods in Springfield weren't representative. That methodology, could we have some people all with kids at Ryan Road where Bridge Street wasn't represented? So you, I mean, just to, to, to play up right. the logic. There was a federal judge reading down in his mouth. <laughs> I, I, I agree with David. I think that that would really alarm, you know, uh, people who live around Ryan Road or Bridge Street because they've been, um, they've been pressured in the past. There's been talk about eliminating those schools. And, and um, there might be concern that, that their voice isn't heard. Is the way the wards are drawn now, because right now the schools are in, I believe, one, three, and seven. Probably with any in two, six, four, six, 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 six is uh, Ryan Road. Six Ryan Road. We, we've seven. got, uh, and it's there's an eight school up in there. So one, three, six, and seven. Oh, so that, that border's right there, isn't it, with Ryan Road? Yes. Yeah. yeah it's just the outside of the street right. is uh, seven. Right. Yeah. So I, I, get, I, I, I know redrawing lines would be a, a mass headache. Uh, but is the, do people feel right now that war representation actually gives proper school representation? I don't know if there's a concern about that out there or not, but it would seem like there would be a little top heavy at certain words. Well, the flip side of the argument is, 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 is educational policy is not war based. It's, it's pretty, now, Massachusetts and most other states now are statewide based, but you can make the case now, even 20 years ago, it was, it was, it was more, more educational policy was decided, decided locally. And it's not like a pot of issue. It, it's, it's different, but the, the federal courts are coming down more and more on, on, on municipalities that don't have one representation on school committees and city councils because it's, it's less apt to, to, to elect a, a minority candidates to, to teach for one of the, the, the Chelsea that just changed from, from an at-large school committee to, to district because of the federal decision. So having just shared the re-precincting, I went exactly where you went, was maybe we base it on schools, however, that would mean that we'd have to have special elections because the current ward maps would not represent those schools. So the schools would have to be a separate election with separate voting booths to do it at the cost of junk. It could be very confusing. Could be very very confusing. confusing. So I just, I just, I said, ooh, no, <laughs> no. Yeah, there's one other issue, kind of a practical one, that if you had all at-large members of the school committee, an individual wouldn't necessarily know who do I contact if I have a problem with the schools. At least if there's a board representative, well, you know, okay, this is the guy I have to contact. Yeah. And that might make it just logistically easier for, for all parties. My, my kid is, has to get up at 6 o'clock to catch the bus. This isn't right. Or my kid isn't getting picked up regularly. That's the person you would go to to talk to about it. So, or that's just a 
poor example, but example of what would be uh, uh, school based. Other comments in this, this area. So again, we're going to be seeking public comment on, you know, do we keep uh, 7 plus 2 plus 1? Do we change to 7 plus 1 plus 1? Uh, 7 plus 3 plus 1? Um, other options, uh, do, we, do we keep them all ward-based as they currently are? Do we, do we do um, at large? This is where we, we need to kind of get public comment on that particular piece as pros and cons. Other comments in this area? When we're okay. seeking public comment, are we going to be uh, not giving any recommendation uh, in terms of how we feel and just listening? My understanding from the last meeting was that we were going to be listening. That, um, that we weren't going to be taking votes before the public comment session, that we were going to uh, lay out some of these questions that you saw up there for the public to have parameters as to what to comment on. We would then um, make the decisions after we've heard public comment and then move forward with uh, the process of, of filling in the charter blanks. That's my recollection of the meeting. If it's, there's others, please jump in. Uh, next section. Can I just ask one? Please. Okay. Am I missing something? Is there also a possibility of having the mayor attend the meeting, chair the meeting, and not vote? I'm sorry. Thank you for the fourth option. Okay. okay. Which is similar to the city council now. Mayor attends, chairs, and does not vote. So laying those four parameters out again. Mayor attends, chairs, votes. Mayor attends. Chairs doesn't vote, mayor attends, does not chair, and votes, and mayor is not on at all. So those would be the four options. Because that would fix the even number thing. Yeah. Mary, does that solve your piece of it? I think that, that that's another reason with that the mayor wouldn't show up. Just, just to throw that out. I see. If yeah. the mayor didn't have a vote, the mayor wouldn't show up. Why would you? Unless you would only count this as a controversial thing. Well, I guess, but if you were well, chairing the meeting, however, just like city council, you would show up to make sure that the meeting ran. But I mean, we're we're playing out. We're thinking personalities when in terms of structure. I think is where we need to go. Um, other comments in this area, then, Steve, you've got composition taken care of. In terms of office, folks, do you want to talk about that one? So right now. The wards are four-year terms with staggered elections, and the at-large are two-year terms. Is that is my understanding correct? So it's two-year terms. This is, the, this is the draft that you wrote. Right. Right. Okay. Currently, you're saying I mean, currently you're saying that the at-large is a four-year. My understanding is the at-large are two-year. Correct. The wards are four-year and staggered. And staggered. Odd, and e odd and even. One, three, five, and seven run for four years, and I don't know which one we're cycling on. Two, four, and six run the alternate. So we, do we have you know, historic, historic <coughs> knowledge why it was set up that way? No. I could find that, that out. I could take that. Oh, we got people who may have experience. Yeah. Is that something you want to find out why that was instituted that way? I'll, I'll follow up. I mean, I, I only flag it because I know the draft says two years, and um, uh, it would be a change. So I think it's a change for him potentially by raising an eyebrow. Uh -huh. so what's required to put your name on the ballot for school committee? 50 signatures. 50 signatures, okay. Is that for everything? I believe so at this point in time. We'll discuss that later in the charter mm -hmm. uh, discussion. Should that stay the same? But at this point in time, 50 gifts counts or whatever you want. That would come in the, um, there's an election section where you decide how many signatures for the mayor for the school committee for the college. Under the eligibility uh, criteria here, it says at the time of the election, shall be a voter. Uh, I assume someplace in the document voters going to be defined as yes. the president of the city. Yes. And what happens, um, okay, if they remove then 
together vacant. And I think that you talked earlier about uh, filling vacancies, and I thought that the method that was in this document for filling vacancies was for the runner-up. Yes. And but different in the uh, city council. And I, I thought at the beginning of the conversation you indicated that it should be the same in both. Uh, both the city council and the school board. Yeah, I'll take a look at that. If that is, it's an anomaly that needs to be corrected. What's the current system for filling vacancies on the school committee? Any vacancy, uh, uh, let's see here. Yeah. Any vacancy occurring on the board may be filled by a joint ballot of the City Council and School Committee Convention at any time. The members elected shall hold office for the next five term. So it's, it's just selected by a joint meeting of the Council and the School Committee. So they have a joint function uh, for that purpose. There's no further stipulation has to be within the board? Uh, no, we've had members serve on the school committee who have moved during their term and uh, kept their seats. Right, and there, and there is some provision in, that we can talk about is if, if in, in, ward, in ward school committee um, and even in ward city council, if you remove from the ward but stay in the city, unless it's in less than six months remain in the term, you can still serve. So we can talk about that. I mean, that that's common. In, one representation. You know, if you if you, if you just have to move to another part of the city, I mean, why should you? Why should the city have a special election? You could just remain, you could just just serve. But again, we're going to kick that discussion down the road. For uh, are you still looking at this? If I would turn. This was a one-inch binder, and then this week it became a three-inch binder. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, terms of office. Any more comments on terms of office? I mean, do, do we have any sense that people like the four year structure? Or do you need to switch to two years? <coughs> Anybody? This goes back to the point I think you made about trying to, mm -hmm. if we lengthen the terms, would that encourage more people? And it doesn't seem to have helped the school. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the reasons why people are in this position, I'm sure it was. Um, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm generally uh, a fan of longer terms. I think it allows people to take a longer view. Um, so I'm not, I don't, so I don't, I don't mind the structure as it is. But I know that view isn't that necessarily a majority view. So I do want to call it if these people want to re kind of re reconsider it. And the staggered, I think, goes back to Tom's point about the keep a history of people on there. Understanding the history because you could replace half. Mark, I, I'm not sure which way to go on, uh, on this. You know, I'm not a strong feeling one way or the other. But I'm wondering if the alternative view to the, the longer term encouraging more people to serve, given that it's essentially a voluntary position, because there's a small stipend, would people feel um, reluctant to go and serve if they have to make a commitment for four years instead of a shorter term? Again, part of what will be on the list of questions to ask them to see if that gets any point of view. Um, eligibility. Anybody have uh, points about the eligibility? All right. Powers and duties, as pointed out, um, and prohibitions are basically written by state law, so there's not much you can do about it. I do note that um, no member of the school committee shall hold any other city office or city employment, which is a salary payable to the city treasurer. Do you want to pick up on that, Steve? Yeah, I, mean, I don't know if that's I don't know if that's a prohibition now, and I don't know if that's a, a, an issue before. Has a school committee member ever been an employee of the city? And basically, what we're doing here, even in the city council, we're prohibiting employees from serving. Council is serving on the school committee. 
just want to make sure that we realize this is what we're doing here. And I don't know if that occurs in this system, that employees have been involved. Is there a history of conflicts? Or I mean, you can see whether they'd be conflict in the city council position, or there would be a conflict in the school committee position. Is there a history of that happening? If a teacher were to run it for school committee? Teacher, I believe uh, a teacher is prohibited by law. Someone, okay. someone, okay. someone, someone the DPW, someone. Uh, I mean, the police chief could run for city council. Okay. You know, um, or, or, or a patrolman could run for city council. Mary, that's just probably <laughs> another question that goes up there as well. But I, I think that that opens up a very interesting can of worms. <laughs> Did Jimmy Dosso retire from the sewer treatment plant before he ran for city council, or was he? Did he do both? I don't know. Follow that up on the bread if that would help us. Yeah. Okay, other prohibitions that people want to talk about? Moving on to compensation. A few things have been already said about compensation. Do anybody want to put any early talking points out on that? What are they getting out of people? You know? There, do you have a I actually did get that and sent it up to all of you. Um, I think you said they got nothing except two of them were getting health insurance, but also they get a salary. You're talking we school did. committee? Yeah. She didn't actually give me salary. She okay. gave me two take health, one takes dental, and one takes basic life. Yes, okay, so they do have potential to elect benefits. I thought they got $2,500. Am I wrong on that? find that piece of information out. But the way stuff has been done in the draft essentially cuts to the council. Oh, so it's the council's responsibility now. Right. Yeah. So we don't even need to spell it out in here, correct? Correct. You can spell it out in the transition provisions to say the first school committee elected under the charter shall receive. And, then, and, and, then, and, that, and the reason for that is? The reason for that is um, you set the you, you set a salary and you take that monkey off the back of the first council elected under the under the, uh, under the child. You, usually you do that for, 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 the, for, for the mayor and for the uh, council and for the school committee because you, you, basically you're doing a favor for the first city council to not have to deal with salary issues for a long time. Mm -hmm. you know? So that's why it's done. Right. But we did something that was a change from current law. That could be a flashback for us. Right. It could be, um, but I mean, if you want to, you know, if you want to, if you want to do this exercise to attract the best candidates, then you may want to, you know, say, okay, the first, you know, the first mayor left in the charter, and you can get the salary to her politically, in the political process, it would never, it would never get to that point. In this process, it can. Then not to deal with it. I mean, that's how, that's how, that's how we've done it in, in, in most other, in most other places, um, because. If you want to pay the mayor a hundred thousand dollars or something like that, it's very hard in the political process to get it there. Okay, food for thought. Now. When we talk about compensation, we had said um, in terms of the um, council people that they receive a salary that's about half of the state average. I was just wondering when we were talking about the benefit package if it's one idea of having like a benefit package buyback, and if somebody waives the benefit package, can they take it $2,500 in lieu of that to add to their compensation, something like that? I think that sort of begs the whole question of, when I look at, at, at elected officials and wonder why are they getting benefits as city employees, um, or the same benefits that city employees receive, I'm not altogether comfortable with that add to um, the fact that that means that, yeah, I guess in the case of the city council, you have some members, almost half the members, aren't taking any benefits. They're just getting their $5,000 stipend. Some are getting probably five or $6,000 in individual health insurance, and a handful are getting family insurance. So you have some council members that are earning $5,000, some earning 10, and some earning around 15 all in, and the, um, the inequality there kind of bothers me, as well as the conflict of giving them benefits that they are effectively voting on for other city employees. So 
I would be more comfortable. Check that with the extreme. You'd be saying they couldn't drive on roads that they were voting for, you know, improvement on. I, I don't know. No, no. I'm saying that they they're receiving health care benefits that city employees get. Right, entitled they, to city of the, the city but employees. But even if they passed like a Clean Air Act, they'd be breathing the cleaner air. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, they, they they're members of the town, so. I, I guess They'll I'm always be voting on something. They'd always be voting on that something that they have vested in interest in. You know, I mean, people on the school committee have children at Bridge Street School. They don't want Bridge Street School closed. You know, and I mean, like, I don't see that as a conflict. Let's go to, to Richard and Mark. Instead of a buyback, just eliminate because they're elected, eliminate those benefits and raise their salaries or raise their stipends mm -hmm. to let's say seventy five hundred or five or ten thousand flat. And then they all, everyone's treated equal, and nobody's going, hey, you're getting an extra plot like that. Mike? Yeah, uh, Mark? Oh, just that I, I thought that's what Todd was getting at, that the issue of equity, that you could still go and provide a, a benefit, or not a, a benefit, compensation for what they're getting, but that this way it would be done uh, evenly among all the, the members of the council. I don't know what Northampton's policy is, and I, I'm speaking off the top of my head, but I know that in some cities and towns, 19 hours, if you're an employee under 19 hours, you're not eligible for benefits. Mm -hmm. And I just, when we talk about equity, that's just one of those little things that's always stuck in the back of my head of why, yes, I know a city council puts in more than 19 hours a week, but I just, somehow it catches me in a weird place. So, um, as a, someone who wants a living wage for everyone, I just get nervous in that area. Other questions or comments in this particular realm? Compensation. Compensation. The, uh, uh -huh. we, we currently have these staggered terms. Correct. Four years and elections every two years. Correct. And the uh, increase in uh, salary on the uh, compensation says it only happened during 18 months, first 18 months. So that means that there's only be a six month window every two years in which a vote on that could be taken. Right. Okay. It's, it's very unusual, in, at least in my experience, to have a, a four year and two year stagger. I've never, never seen that. We're in Northampton. <laughs> we do things better. <laughs> we, we want to just make it all, you know, make it all, 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 all two and all the work. Well, again, if, if you're talking about one of the options is if you're talking about a mayor running every four years, you could run all the city councilors, every, I mean, all the school committee every four years. Um, you know, both that large and wards. And that's one leap that could be made. I think that there's some possibility that if all the members were running at once, maybe there'd be more interest in that election. I mean, it's very confusing now why there's some races and not some races. Why is my guy not running? Right. You know, like that's the I don't even know if the word six person's running again, if they are supposed to run this time. They should know that because two weeks we're on the ballot. But you know. it is very confusing for the moment. They don't know who's running or <laughs> Other questions in this realm? Moving up to succession, uh, which is uh, section 4 6. Um, the, the proposal here is that the runner up. Uh, the current methodology is that the school committee and the um, city council have a joint uh, meeting and elect somebody. Any comments in this area? I'll start us off. I don't like your plan. <laughs> um, I'll tell you why. For instance, there are two candidates running. Candidate A is running to keep um, uh, uh, South Street School open since that one's already closed. And candidate B is running to close South Street School. Candidate A wins, wins overwhelmingly. Okay? Overwhelmingly. 80-90%. Candidate B gets 5 votes, 10 votes. <laughs> candidate B, uh, by your methodology, is automatically... No, no, no. no. no 30%. Okay. 70-30. Okay. 30%. 30%. Um, is automatically elected, even though the voters rejected that position and rejected that candidate and voted 70% for the other. They're currently, 
what we have done and has worked effectively the last couple of times I've seen it happen is again this, they, the school committee uh, takes a look and tends to be the person who was last next person down. It has tended to be that way, but it hasn't always been that way. And um, I just think that you put 20 professionals in a room uh, who care about the city, I think they can find an elect person. I'm more comfortable with that system than taking someone who won by 30% of the vote versus... But have it have 30% have of that large of the highest vote gap. Yeah. I just, I know, I just, that gets even more confusing. If you don't have 30, if the next person doesn't have that, then what do you do? Then you go to the, you go to the joint meeting. Yeah. So I would just go to the joint meeting, but that's my personal opinion up front. I'm uncomfortable with uh, the second place person. I think that second place person should be considered by the joint meeting, but to have it as an automatic uh, when there could be closing or opening South Street School as a division, you know, the voters spoke at 70% to keep it open. Uh, and now you're going to put somebody on there who wants to close it. It's just, it's just a, a, a silly example, maybe, but it's just it's something that makes me concerned. How has the current system worked? You've been here a long while. Is they, that's how they've done it. And it's functioned very it, well? It, to me, is, I don't believe that that's an area that has been of concern. We can ask again for the public comment on that particular piece when we talk about successions for both city council and for mayor and for school committee, which will be part of what we'll ask the public to talk about, uh, succession ways of doing that, since obviously the, the current mayor is leaving early, has caused a, a dust up in that area. But, um, you know, I, I just feel strongly that on the school committee, not, not city council, not mayor, but on the school committee, for some reason, that one just works and has worked, and I would leave it alone. So I'm sorry, I disagree with you. Times, no, 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 you don't. It's yeah. not, I, this yeah. is not the, this, I'm not wedded to it, believe yeah. um, But how many times has it happened? Oh, in my mind, maybe three to 20 okay. years. So it's not a lot. I could be wrong, and I'd have to, I don't have kids in school, so I don't pay attention to that piece as much as I should. So it's never so been an, an issue that they just can't get to agree on who should get the seat? No, no. It's okay. been fairly. Uh, and I'll check. But the, maybe it's been the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get anybody to, to get any interest in this. That, that's what just happened in Ward 3. Yeah. yeah. We, had not, we didn't have anybody running for Ward 3. Right? Uh, well, the Ward 3 um, um, representative moved to Holyoke, and then it was just a scramble to find anybody who was willing to put their name forward. Well, and that person. You can see that last minute, though, in my understanding, because we. We that was our Ward 3 counselor. Oh, no, we had oh. the Ward 3 also, the Ward 3 um, City, uh, school committee, school committee, school committee right. member also had the same problem, midterm left. And they had to be joined meeting when they selected somebody. Yeah, but it was after, you know, really beating the bushes for a candidate. Did that candidate run for re-election? Just on the end of the I'm interested. <laughs> If, if his term is up, which I am not sure that it is or not, it's, he's unchallenged. But he's running. He, he, he will intends run. to he intends remain to in, this, okay. in that position. Whether he's up this four years. But I don't know that he's up this four years. But <laughs> I wouldn't know because there's no lawn signs because he's running on a post. If he's running, you know what I'm saying? Like. All right, this, um, this section here, I'm um, still in. Uh, on page four, uh, yeah. four line six, thirteen. Four six, yeah. yeah, but this I, I, the part beginning on line thirteen or the beginning of line twelve of vacancy shall occur. But then you have um, a man who receives the highest number of votes who is not then serving, and then the next line is something about the remaining two months of the current term. Is is this clear? Is I'm not sure who this is referring to. Is this who in the last six? Is that the first part of that saying the same thing up to the top of the 30%? Is that what you mean? Yes. Yeah, we need to kind of, yeah, that yeah. isn't obvious to me. But then what's the remaining two months of the current term, beginning of line 17? Right, because it would be between, it would be between it would be November and January. Oh, because the yeah. appointment begins in January. Right. Okay. So you could, 
you, your fourth will be served right away. You don't have to wait for the January. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> and B is basically what you have now. Yes. Okay. Other comments in this area of succession or filling vacancies? Steve, do you have other things you want to bring up on the school committee? There was a second part to that agenda which said um, the school committee and other elected officials and then deliberate on these. Well, the other elected officials are what other elected officials besides mayor, council, and school committee does the city want to keep elected? The only other position that I know of in Northampton is city clerk. I don't think any of the board of commission is elected. Board of health, plan board, elected. Well, there's, so, there's also a special occasional. True. Special occasional? Right. Okay. And that's probably by statute. You have to work with occasional school committee. Right. Okay. So you can't, three you can't make that three three large. Large. Yeah. yeah. But um, that's not a charter issue? No, it's not a charter issue. At least that's yeah, because that's, that's, that's a charter, which would be separate from our it's, charter. It's the location of yeah. the yeah. charter. Um, so the only other, and, and I've provided materials here to read about elected versus appointed and, and what's, what's the best route to go. I mean, the Collins Center has an opinion on that. Um, you know, if, 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 there's, if, there's a, if, there's a, if there's a lot of discretion in the position, if there's political accountability um, and things like that, it should probably be made elected. If it's purely administrative, and 99% and, and of the duties are prescribed by statute, there's no reason to elect the person. There's no discretion. There's no political accountability needed in that position. So, for instance, that would only apply at this point in time to the city clerk's office. Okay. Uh, several years ago, we had a special act of the charter of the legislature, which moved the treasurer's office into a new CFO position that had um, the whole financial structure underneath the management of uh, our financial uh, person. Uh, and we created that and took the treasurer out of being elected and put it in as an appointed. So uh, that has been taken, changed in the last decade. Um, is there a discussion by us on the library trustee? Is not part of the charter. The Oliver Will Trust is not part of the charter. So you can't, you know, I mean, it, it, it'd be difficult to, to start, you know, um, going into the trust documents and all that stuff. Um, and I think it, it might be, I mean, I, I, in this special, I try to do it if you want. Um, you know, you can, you can delve into the trust and everything if you, if, you, if, you, if you want, but I'm not sure you want to open that can, can of worms. Um, it's just, in, in, in our experience, and we're doing some research now, um, you know, when you have it, when you have an administrative officer elected, you're really rolling the dice. You might have good luck for the past 10, 15, 20, 30 years with somebody, but you know, I've seen this is a neighboring city right here that a you know, city clerk got elected very recently and they haven't seen the person yet. You know, and, and, that, and, that, and that's common. That's common. And, and mistakes being made and elections haven't been, you know, uh, errors been made. And you look through the special acts and you see all these special acts passed ratifying it and affirming something that was done wrong. And you look at, you know, if you, if you trace it back, it's always, you know, traceable to the, to the city clerk's office. I mean, you know, Holyoke had an elected charter commission recently, the city clerk let it go, and, you, and it, was, it was flawed. They had a special act to reconfirm and ratify the election of that, of that charter commission because she said she didn't need 15% of the voters to, to petition um, uh, to, to, get, uh, to get on the ballot. I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying. These are the things that happen. This is this is this is not. You know, I'm not just making up stories here. But it's really you know, treasurer is elected, collector is elected, you know, uh, and money being missing. It's 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 really a problem. It's a problem in Massachusetts. It's a mess in Massachusetts. But, you know, but okay, so at the moment, this only is germane to the city clerk, city clerk's position. Correct. And. Do you, anyone have comments on whether that position should be elected or not? Mark? Well, just like a question about, um, when I, I remember having to vote for, what was it, uh, the probation? That wasn't probation. It was, it was probate? Probate. Probate. Yeah, probate. I, said, I don't know these guys. You know, so I always left it blank. And I'm wondering if, if that's um, same thing that happens here for a clerk is, uh, 
Is there anybody can find out? I mean, do people bother with that? Oh, sure. I mean, I mean, if, 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 if it's on a post, that's another reason not to bother. I mean, right, but, I mean, in recent years with clerk, it's just kind of a post. But I'm yeah. sure for these down ballot races, I mean, you have a lot of blanks for for city council at large. People don't know if they get they get to twice. You get you get a whole slew of blanks. Yeah. Um, so I, I gotta think there's a lot. We of have a lot of blanks ballot. when somebody runs out of posts. Sure. So, um, but how? What what fact would you need, or what? Would you need help well, it's, it's clouded uh, by the fact that they are running on the post. Um, but my sense was that if you could establish that, look, you know, this race isn't generating um, a lot of attention or thoughtfulness among the voters, uh, you know, maybe that's one more indication of saying, ah, you know, it, it would not be uh, a controversial issue to recognize the city clerk as being primarily custodial now and not policy oriented and move it into one more reason to suggest that it would be appropriate to move it into an appointed position. Okay, and we'll have that actually the data coming up uh, in less than two weeks. Um, Tom, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but you had a, a, a uh, caution in this area. Do you want to talk about that again? Yes, and uh, listening to Steve, I uh, my caution was that you, that goes what Steve has said, you want somebody in that position that knows what they're doing and has longevity uh, because uh, it's a very important position in terms of uh, getting information, making uh, decisions with regard to what is proper and what is not proper. I, I think that my caution would be that if it is, a, if it is an appointed position, that it span uh, at least two terms of the mayor, if the mayor is doing the appointing, uh, or possibly two and a half terms, so that it's, uh, there's always a, it, it's not a political plum for the mayor to appoint someone to that position. Right. This is, you're talking basically a six-year term. Mm -hmm. Six or 12, yeah. yeah. I, I would say 12 myself. I, it's, uh, and Steve probably has, uh, has more uh, breadth knowledge of this than I do. Mine is pretty localized in the towns that I deal with locally. But if you want somebody that knows that knows where to find the information and can give you good information in that in that position. Yeah. You're right. One of the problems we have is when, when, when the city and town clerks serve for you know, decades, when that job when somebody leaves, it's, it, you know, it's, it, 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 getting back to Todd's comment last in last meeting about technology, all this stuff should be scanned. Having one city clerk, the only one person in the city knows where everything is, that's dangerous. Okay. Well, so, that's, the, that's the flip side. Yeah. You, you, have to, you have to have somebody that knows. <laughs> that's true regardless of length of term. Right? Right. Because you have some underlying staff there that's as a faculty person of information. Right. Right. So Mary, can we add this to the list of questions then? Um, so specifically, should the city clerk's office, the office of city clerk, um, be elected or appointed? There's one nuance to that question that's maybe not, not happening to the others. It's, when you throw out that question, the overwhelming response is going to be keep it elected. Mm -hmm. Because people like to elect somebody. Mm -hmm. So if you don't present the arguments back and forth, you're not going to be, that's going to be the answer to your questions. Then. So I, I just caution. Okay, then just how would you? Just throwing that out. I mean, I think you have to. I think you have to present, you know, some arguments on, on both sides. Um, and I'm not sure you're going to do that for the other things. So right. I just, I'm just, I'm just bringing that up. To the, the, to this particular form, that might be a difficult. The response might be preordained. Right. Richard. Yeah, um, even though, let's say, the clerk doesn't get to, has any opposition, I know over the years that the clerk usually one of the top vote getters. So people are paying attention. So, I mean, if they got three votes, they'd, that'd be something different. But if they're getting as many as the mayor, I sure wouldn't take it off. You know, like you say, people want to vote. And if, that, if they feel as though they've got input in that, I think that's a, certainly a good thing. Right. But people, people don't, you know, the city clerk, uh, clerks have to have certain administrative skills and capacity. These elections turn into popularity contests. And, and the voter cannot judge performance because they don't know the intricacies of an office. Well, we've been lucky in this city. Yeah, we've been lucky. We've had, <laughs> we've had <laughs> in other places. My yeah. Excellent clerks. 
Um, but it's just a matter of, and we had a very contested race, a very hot and very close race the last time around. Uh, people paid attention, and the city clerk has always been the top vote getter by a lot. Yeah. Like 90, 95% of the people who are balloting that day have voted, check the clerk's name. Right, and, and, the, and it's like that in a lot of other places. When you go after this position, you've got to really, you've got to really want, want to stretch the plot a little bit. But in, in, in all instances, you always grandfather the incumbent. So that takes care of that problem. Well, the office becomes appointed. The office becomes appointed um, upon the upon the vacant upon a vacancy. Because in most of these places, so then, so then you're going from a vote to a lifetime appointment. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're right. Depending on depending on where that person is in their career, you could you can make it appointed. You know, within you know five years, or depending on when someone's going to retire, you could do you could do it. You know, ten ten them in. Do it both ways. Or you can not give anybody anything. That have to. It just becomes appointed, and that person, you know, can be appointed or not appointed. But a lot, most of these places, when this happens, the clerks have been. And this is maybe just pure luck. The clerks have been at the end of their careers. Now, Wendy still serve for life, so she's got one. Um, well, the in talking about that. I mean, if you if you were going to say one of the options was that. Uh, I'm passing the city charter, this, uh, assuming that there's a, a new charter, that uh, the then clerk would be out of, out of her position. That may be a recipe for failure if the person is that popular. So we have to right. that into consideration. Right. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There, there, are, are, clerks that, there are clerks that could get, that could deep set the charter. This happened before. Yes. Happened here. Happened, yes. happened here. Happened in Boston. Very recently. Okay, so again, we'll take public comment on that. You have to figure out and read through some of that public comment piece because I'm not quite sure how we're going to handle that. But that will be part of our discussion at the end of the agenda. Moving forward to the executive branch, I believe is the next piece that needs to be um, teased out. I just, like to quick you this. I just want to make sure we leave enough time to talk about how we're going to structure the public hearing session. I was going to leave 15 minutes. Do you think that's adequate? I would argue for more. Okay, I will, uh, noting that it is 7 o'clock, we have uh, 6 to 8 was on our commitment. Let us try to wrap up the executive branch, a big piece, in the next 30 to 35 minutes. And if we need to table some things and push it in, let's try that. Yeah, yeah. we have time. Okay. Let's walk through the executive branch. Uh, qualifications, term of office, anything you want to talk about first, Steve? Well, and the, the mayor, um, one of the, the, the stipulations here is the mayor has to be full time and cannot have another job. Um, that's not a stipulation for town for us. It's a full time job and, um, and, um, and you, can't, you can't do that now. So, and, and the same old thing you know, term of office, you know, two or four. Um, compensation, same, same issue. Um, the prohibitions are pretty much the same as for the others. And um, let's, let me just stop there because those are the those are the major decisions that need to get made for the, for the, for the mayor. What is it? One general office and the compensation. One of the areas of mayor and qualifications, this came up with Representative Lantigua, who was serving as a representative and a mayor at the same time. And the problems that that caused up in the city of Juan. The problems you can't do anything about that in the municipal charter because it's, it's the state office. Okay. You can't prohibit, in the municipal charter, you can't prohibit that person from serving the state office. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Under C compensation line 16, the first 18 months of the term for which counselors oh, are elected. Oh, sorry. Yep. Good, good catch. And again, as you go through these documents, we'll, we'll start producing final documents after the public hearing. Um, but if you find typos or things that seem strange or not clear, we need to bring those up uh, in this these documents, the charter documents to Steve, if they come up in minutes or supporting documents, they go to mayor, just for clarification. Just for, I'm sorry, but that should say council. Okay, so okay. the council is, yes. Because it says the city council shall by ordinance. So it's the first 18 months of which they are elected, so it doesn't really matter. Now, if it's a four-year term, we might, have to, we might have to fix this. Depending on the term. 
Okay, that's different than uh, reading that carefully. Thank you, Tom, for picking that up. Um, so I have a four-year term for mayor. The council could change it midterm for me by this language. Am I incorrect in reading that? No, this is correct. This is correct because this came from a four-year term mayor chart. Um, so it, it works. In fact, the mayor just got a raise recently. Um, so this, this works. So when it, I hate to digress, but when we're talking about the uh, staggered elections on school committee, uh, couldn't the language be the same the first 18 months for which the counselors are in office and then get, get around that issue of only having a six month window in which school committee members, uh, in which there could be a vote on uh, raising the school committee salary? Okay, let me take a look at that photo okay. closely. Okay, That's, all right. All right. Um, one of the areas of qualifications, anybody have any further comment on that? Anything they want to investigate? Any information? Moving into... Let me just go back to that. I mean, you just have to understand that if the mayor, if the mayor gets elected and owns a business, the mayor cannot engage in that business anymore. So... And why is that restriction? Just help me out here. Because... Uh, Voters vote for the mayor as chief executive and they want them to, to be the only attention they give us to the city and not to their law practice. Okay. Or the restaurant that they own. We're paying them to be full-time employees. Uh, yeah. $100, well, many of us are full-time employees and have part-time jobs. So I'm just I'm playing devil's advocate, not saying that why could the mayor not have a part-time job? Because... I don't know how a mayor could do a part-time job. I fully agree with you, but I'm just saying, I'm just trying to, to, to flip the coin over and see what it would look like on the other side. It's a consideration, I mean, you know. We get, we expect a 24-7 mayor. Right. And if the, if the mayor is running a, you know, a gas station or something, and it's 24-7, I mean, or owns a gas station, I don't know. But you if can't, I, you can't have Michael Bloomberg become your mayor and this sort of... <laughs> but if I'm, if I'm a, an owner of a business, then you're going down the path that I have to, how far do we have to go down that path? Do I have to physically turn over the day-to-day -day operations, the oversight, the management, the uh, stocks and bonds, the major decisions? I mean, wh where do you draw that line, That's the line that I get nervous about? It, it seems what you're inviting here is a career politician because you're asking somebody to give up their career in order to be eligible for this office. Or to take their business because there would be a CEO to take care to of take it. Take their business, to whether any type of business or IT or, or career. And if you, wherever you may be working, if you're giving up your position for four years, not likely it's going to be there when, you, when you're no longer mayor. Play, play with this issue for a few minutes. Yeah, yeah going with that. But if you lay it out up front, that you will have to give up your business uh, should you become mayor. Well, then you're only going to attract people who are willing to do that. It may not be career politicians, but you're at least encouraging people to take the job really seriously. It is a full-time job. That person who might have had some other, uh, you know, is saying, well, you know, four years down the road, I still want to go back to you know, doing what I was doing before. If you can't do that, you know, if there's the only way to do that is if you maintain a, you know, a hand in the business, well, then maybe you really shouldn't be running for mayor. Well, I think this language, nor shall the mayor be engaged in any other business, I mean, that's not exactly a bright line. That doesn't say they have to liquidate all their, you know, holdings. To me, that means I can imagine if, if, if somebody did own a restaurant, they just aren't going to be working at the restaurant, but certainly their spouse could be running the restaurant. It could still be their family business. I don't see that it means that they have to. As long as that's clear, Maddie, I, that would be my concern. I don't they, know <laughs> that it's clear. I'm saying yeah. engaged in as there's room for and, interpretation and then on the, there. And then again, as, as the person who gets to flip the coin over again, let's look at the other side. I'm running for mayor and I have a business. And the voter's going to ask me as I'm running for mayor, um, are you going to give up your business to do it? And I say yes or I say no, and the voters could vote me in or vote me out. Mm -hmm. um, is, it, is it the voter who should make that decision, or should the charter make that decision? Mm -hmm. So 
So I just just kind of flip it. I get what you're yeah, saying. Right. I know exactly the, the case you're talking about. Soon as you was like, I know what you're talking about. How common is this language in other cities? It's 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 pretty, pretty common, but it's not it's not you know consistent. I mean, is the is the situation that she's talking about has it arisen? Has someone has someone litigated this no. and you're not no. allowed to run, own your business even after day to day operations? No. Nothing like this would ever probably right to the price to litigate. But if you have somebody that has uh, several rental properties, and that's right, a, that's, that's a business. business. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. you're, you could be precluding a, a number of people from even considering. Well, that's I've actually taken a passive investment. I've taken this out of the drive. You have more than four units or something. It's you're considered in the business of being a landlord. If you're actively yeah. managing. Yeah. Yeah, so it just it just gets me into an, an interesting area that I'm not comfortable with. Richmond. The mayor, remember Mayor mm -hmm. Mike from Springfield? Mm -hmm. He had what, spaghetti sauce business. Mm -hmm. he, he, I, I think right. a lot of it went to charity, but still, he owned a spaghetti sauce business and was the mayor of Springfield. So everybody see him? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, All right. Another example. Another example. <laughs> yeah. I, I, actually, I'm just looking back. This is the second. I had, Look at the executive branch when I had the yeah. document looking at those other yeah, yeah. cities with nine city council. And I didn't see how that it was, the, what I saw as a modern language, nor shall the mayor be actively engaged. This is the same sentence here, except it's missing the word actively. Active. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Would that resolve the point you were bringing up, then? Yeah, to me, but then, you know, if the mayor went in there and attended bar one night, is that the end of it? I mean, I, I guess if too, that, you know, especially in the world of, I mean, but if you had an online business selling your book, right. you know, it's on Amazon, are you in the, it's like, you know. Or, writing, or you write a column. Yeah. Right. Or you're writing a book. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you make the salary so high that they're going to not worry about it, then you run into the. But, but I agree that, you know, in a democracy, if somebody is being called to fully disclose what it is, then the people can decide whether they think that's a conflict of interest or the person wouldn't have enough time to devote to office or, you know, whatever. But I flip it around, not only what if it was just a city employee mm -hmm. who had another job. I mean, wouldn't it be appropriate for the, the supervisor and ultimately the mayor to say, hey, look, you know, you're paying you for a full-time job. You're not devoting enough time. You're not, you're not fulfilling the expectations that we set out. Well, is and this, this way not fulfilling them, or you're just saying by virtue of the fact that you have a second job? Because I think that's economically discriminatory right there. Yeah. I mean, well, some families you are, just can't go on one person having one job. You have to have a double job. But where this is a full-time job, and they're not meeting it. And, but I'm thinking, well, if, not if meeting there's no it is other different. recourse... This doesn't the say not meeting it. This says blanket prohibition, whether meeting duties or not meeting. Isn't the idea that we compensate the mayor generously so that they can devote 110 percent of their time? Um, but what if they have a book on Amazon? <laughs> but I, I don't know that that or technically is engaged. Or, or a landlord. The landlord thing is pretty tricky. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, the board of health showing up. You know. Or yeah, I mean, I, I would think you'd want to distance yourself if you were a landlord, or a, um, and there are ways to do that by by hiring management. Just owning property and renting it out is a passive activity. It's not an active activity. But to, to David's point, all of these various scenarios can be decided by the voters at the end of the day. I can, I can make as a voter a subjective judgment. Are you balancing your private and public well or not? I don't have to. Can you if there's no disclosure? I mean, is, oh, there, a there, there's is there a requirement? There's disclosure. Oh. And maybe we have to write that in too. But where is the disclosure of all the assets they own? and? All their investments, Good point. all their time. There's, there's no financial disclosure. There's no financial disclosure that I'm aware of. For me. I've been more angry, but once one was mayor, you could see. Are you, are you, are you handling, are you doing a job as mayor or not, or are you too proud about your business and now I'm going to vote you out? It's sort of yeah, an ideal world with perfect knowledge. All voters could make that decision. I, mean, yeah. uh, I don't know if there's financial disclosure you put in the charter, but that's the statutory type thing. I think, I think how I would deal with that is in the transition provision that it would, would require the city council to, to, uh, to, um, to enact an ordinance on financial disclosure, pumped it to the 
the city council. I've seen a lot of financial disclosure ordinances on the books uh, because state officials have to, certain yeah. state officials from grade year up have to do financial disclosure. That's not applicable to municipal officials. Okay, other areas within this area, again, we're not coming to conclusion, we're just airing points of view. Uh, we want to move into the term of office. We've talked about two, four, uh, moving to two to four. And this, 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 chart's a little bit, this chart's much more complete. Um, he added more numbers if you want to turn to that chart, which is further down in here. I have a historical question. I don't know if anyone knows the answer. Uh, the last few mayors have had long tenures, even though they're elected every two years. Uh -huh. There's a period in the mid '70s where there's there's a rapid turnover. Part time. Uh, what's that? We had part time mayor. Is that that's what it was? So they they stepped down. It wasn't the uh, yeah, it was a follow the political time. Well. Uh, I believe. Wait, tell me out here. Um, you said he was the first full time mayor. Yeah. Right. Because was Chapman on? Dairy Mart, right. by Pro Brush. <laughs> 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 and he called Square Dancers for money, too. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And then our one of the most popular mayors in the city of North Bam, Wally Pachowski, uh -huh. he owned a little soda bar down there that was known for a lot of things. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> soda bar was generous, but it was a okay. It was a part time job. He made 15000 a year, and everybody loved him, and he put scoreboards for all. He loved the kids, and then he was just. He was a good, good time. mayor, yeah. He did a good time. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so since there was just been full time, we happened to have had That's mayors right. that have been talking that get bigger elected a lot. The last, the, 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 we've had three full time mayors and all of them have served 10 ish years. Right. right. But how, long, how many times did they have to get distracted with an election? Oh, they all, they, every one of them ran every two years. And um, in my as since I've been here for all of them, um, I think there were serious challenges for at least two or three elections of each that they all ran about five times. Um, they had serious challenges for at least two or three of those um, periods. They had challenges, I believe, for all of them. I think Dave ran one year unopposed, um, but I think they all ran with some type of challenge. Roy Martin ran for years. Uh, uh, right, and then you know, if you talk to two year mayors, they'll say privately, if I was a four year mayor, I would make decisions quite differently. Yeah, I mean, as, as I was saying earlier, I, 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 particularly with mayor, if I were any other position, uh, be, I would be better for the mayor to be able to take a longer view and be able to have the chance to take uh, what might be an unpopular position in the moment, but might look better after being implemented for a couple of years, so you go to the board and say, hey, you gave me a chance to try this, you can see how it worked or if it didn't work. And I think that was a theme of the paper I sent out from the University of Vermont, on, on, if, you, if you read it, on the gubernatorial chance, that that point was made. Mark, was that also similar to what you recommend? Okay. Any other points on two or four year terms? Anybody want to go to six or eight? Good. We've got uh, two and four is the discussion point. We're going to be putting that up on the, the wall board for people to comment on. Rich? Just one point. I talked to four former city councilors for the past two weeks about a lot of stuff, but that was brought up. And all of them thought that there should be four-year terms. Three of the councilors thought term limits of two of two four-limit terms, and one of them thought four-year four terms with no you know open-ended. So just... That, and they've been, that goes back from one of the councillors was a councillor in the 70s on through up until just about four years ago. So I thought that they had a lot of good insight about some other stuff too, which yeah, will be helpful. Yeah. Well, let, me, let me just make a comment on the chart here that uh, there are three cities who are going to vote on the chart. Four cities are going to vote on the chart is November 8th. The Finland, Everett, Holyoke, and, and Newburyport. Um, Holyoke, Newburyport, and um, um, Everett are all recommending a four year term. Methuen already has a four-year term. And they'll change the chart. If the, if the, if the, if the vote is low on the ground. So I mean, that's just the trend. Okay. Moving from the... the I mean, just one more talk. question. I understand Bill's comment about four-year terms perhaps facilitating better governance. Part of me thinks the accountability issue, though, I, I can understand why councilmen wouldn't want to, council members wouldn't want to go out and campaign every two years. It's a hassle. Um, 
having to press the flesh. Is, is there any concern about accountability that you sort of get insulated and, and uh, aren't as accountable to, to the electorate? Comments? I mean, I think you could, it doesn't be either or. I mean, you know, all the councils can be two years, the mayor can be four. Or some councils can be two, or at large can be four, which I know you, have, you didn't like as creating hierarchies. But I mean, I think if everything was four year, you'd have a bigger issue there. Okay. Um, I think some people are get to get stay closer to the ground, get the insta feedback to bring back to the government. That's great. And if someone is there and say, I get to take a longer view and try to make that case, then you might get a better mix of, of opinions. Mary, please. Excuse me. Could Mr. Green repeat what you said about the four councillors? I talked to four councillors. Yes. I talked to four, four former councillors, and all of them agreed that they, the mayor should be a four year term. Three of them said that they thought there should be term limits of two terms. One said they should be just, you know, they could just keep running for four year okay. terms. And they also all agreed that two year terms for councillors was. Ideal. And well, I was confused. I thought I. I oh, no, no, just the mayor. Yeah. Okay. Right. Jumping up. Any further right. comments yeah. in this area? Mark? Um, this, I'm not sure where this would fit in, but it's related a little bit to terms. And, you know, I felt kind of sorry, you know, bad in the last couple of terms when um, when the acting city councilor who ran for mayor and then lost had to give up his position. Michael Bardsley then, you know, had to go find something else to do so he got another chance to run again. And likewise, David Narkowitz said he, it, should he not win, well, then the city loses the benefit of, of his willingness to, to be civically engaged. Uh, you know, is there, is there a possibility of, uh, of having the mayoral race at a different time than the council race? I realize this now creates a problem of, okay, now you're going to have to go to the trouble of having a whole new uh, cost of elections. But if you have it such that an existing city councilor could continue to serve in his elected position, but run for mayor. And if he loses, well, he goes back to being a city councilor. One way to, to handle that that would not cost additional funding is to put the at-large and the mayor on four-year terms and stagger them. So on the, the, this year, the 11, 2011, the mayor runs. 2013, city council, the two city councilors at-large would run for four years. That would give you two people who could potentially run for mayor against the mayor. That's what you're trying to set up. Uh, yeah. Okay, just, just to give you an option that wouldn't cost us another twenty thousand dollars for an election. I'm just a mayor. So. And why would you have it? You can't have them state now. Yeah. Okay. You have to have it in April. Like Richard. In my mind, if the person is gonna is a councilor and wants to run for mayor, he doesn't want to be councilor anymore. So if he loses the bid for mayor. Uh, okay. What is the point? I mean, he, he obviously wants to be something else other than what he is, so I would not be in favor of that at all. I mean, it happens all the time. People run for office higher and get beat, and they just go off somewhere and write a book. Is that the Well, not the Well, you made a comment that you can't be on the, on the state ballot. I didn't understand that. The, uh, it's not illegal, but the Secretary of State does not okay. want local questions. I hope we're going to get away with this with this question. But to have it, yeah. they don't want to on the state on the on the state ballot. That they're not going to go for that. No. We they can won't pass a special act. They we won't can pass right. We can move it to a different time of the year, like Greenfield has done. Greenfield, Greenfield isn't in April, but there's three year term. So they've gone very differently. Right. Other areas within the area of terms. Now we've mentioned term limits. Obviously, uh, two-year term, two, two, two four-year terms has been put out there. Um, that would be an eight total. Uh, that's something that I'm sure will come up at the public hearing. Should there be term limits or not on any of these positions? Okay. There are term limits for mayor in two cities, Lawrence and Bethune. Um, the the uh, the mayors there will say. Again, privately, that basically I have a six-year term because I checked out the last two. Because you're laying up for two years. I mean, I think the most natural term limits is just letting the voters pick somebody else. I, I don't support 
Anyone else want to weigh in on that particular concept? I generally agree, although if we were going to push for four-year terms, because there's, I think, a general, there are, there are concerns out there about excessive executive power, rightly or wrongly, um, pairing that, pairing expanded terms with term limits might be to go down easier. There might be some little reasons to keep in the mix, although I agree with your underlying point. I think elections are affecting term limits, generally speaking. The other kind of balance to that is, is to have a recall. My gut is against to be against recall and uh, term limits, but I take it. Let the voter decide. Uh, just to put my personal opinion out there, but I'd be willing to be swayed by other intellectual arguments in this area, or as you said, political decisions, which might be relevant going forward. Um, other comments that people want to talk about? All right, we're moving on to compensation. I'm going to punt that um, because I don't think it's, it's, we can sit here and argue about a theoretical number for a long time, but I think let's just ask the voters if that should be raised or not. Um, do you want to move into, I'm watching the clock. We have maybe 10 minutes left if we have enough time for the public. Do, is there another section we could pick up? Appointments by the mayor? Let me, go, let me just go back to three, two. Most of this stuff is basically what every mayor has to do. Uh, but what is different in here is the mayor is by virtue of office on every multiple member board. Um, can attend meetings, can go into executive, attend executive sessions, but can't vote. Um, that means when the planning board meets, the mayor can just walk in and sit there and make motions. And, and it's not going to happen, probably, but it allows us to happen. And Which is it, different it, than it is now. And it, it becomes a little controversial um, that the mayor is allowed to deliberate on planning board. Conservation Commission meetings or whatever, but can't vote. Okay. Why are you including that in this language? Because I think it gives the mayor a lot of um, a lot of authority. Um, and, um, if you want a chief executive with, with you know centralized you know uh, centralized authority, then this is one way that uh, that uh, reinforces that. I'm a little confused. I thought from the first meeting there was talk about our strong mayor system and perhaps trying to modify that to give more. Uh, power to the council. It sounds like this language strengthens the mayor even further than they already are. Correct. Correct. I'm, I'm not sure I got the, maybe I missed it completely, that, 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 that you wanted to make, that you wanted to shift a weak man. In no. Hand. No. That wasn't my... It, oh, maybe I misunderstood. But well, the, the, we, have a, we have a strong mayor, weak council. The point was to make the council a strong council, so we have a strong mayor, strong council. What this does is make it even stronger council, a stronger mayor, yeah. excuse me. It, it even strengthens further the mayor's piece. And I think Todd's point is, did we, was that the intent that yeah. we would, we would that go? That seems even, to be a point of contention if yeah. we really want to go further. Would we add even more responsibilities and duties to the, to the, uh, the powers, if I use the right word, more powers to the office of the mayor, or do we want to keep it the same way? This adds more, just so we're aware of that. So you're putting the mayor into an arena of individuals that the mayor uh, appoints, and potentially a mayor with, uh, with political leanings could be could go to a planning board meeting or a zoning board meeting on behalf of uh, a political supporter and attempt to sway that uh, that board and. Potentially affect the individuals who that mayor appoints. It happens now. Yeah, I'm just saying it happens now anyway. It's kind of but, now, but now we're setting up where mayor can come in and make uh, motions. Correct. I, mean, I just throw that out as a comment. Yeah, I, mean, I, yeah. you know, I think that uh, you really you change the dynamics of your citizen board by by doing that. The mayor could still obviously come like anybody else to one of these. Correct bodies and say, I'd like to be on the agenda, I'd like to give a presentation. So the mayor can always put his or her two cents in, for sure. Correct. But this means they really can just step in and wield um, The mayor could be sitting here, a mayor could be sitting here mm -hmm. making motions about this process. Just let's put a, a picture on this. You have a mayor actually sitting here. 
on and making the, the um, motions in this particular committee. Is that appropriate or not appropriate? I, I would say that while, you know, that I, I agree with Todd that I didn't hear that we had a mandate to strengthen this office at all. I would not be for it. Okay. Your turn, Red. You mean as far as, I, I think you're right. It happens all the time. It's just they pick up the phone and say, hey, John Smith's going to be building a poor family. Uh, let's help him out a little bit. Thank you. <laughs> it happens all the time. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, because that keeps the wheels going. Right. It's just, if it's out there, the, people, the public could see that and go, wow. If they might not like it, or they might like it there because of the fact that it is open. But to think that it doesn't happen, it happens. Megan, well, you've been awful quiet. I have been. Just listening. Would you like to add into any of this discussion? Not at this point. Okay. Uh, I don't have two cents here. Okay. Tom, do you have anything further you want to add in this area? Todd, do you want to have an opinion? I just think the change of dynamics. Todd, Mark? Yeah, I, I, I agree with, with the points, and it probably still will take place over the phone, even if it occurs on the committee. I just I would think um, the balance of power between the mayor and the committee is, is a critical uh, balance that we're trying to strike for the next hundred years. And, Shifting more powers to the mayor. I don't understand the logic of that. Marshall, I would tend to, uh, I, I hear what Red's saying, but I would tend to agree with Todd that, that I, I like the way it is where the mayor sits and go from there, but that's not something I'm wedded to or feel that it's a strong point in my, in my uh, portfolio. Moving forward, do we have time? We're right at that point where we had talked about peeling off. Can I make a comment on 3-3? Three, three? Yes. Uh, starting in line 12. Yes. It says, department had subject to the consent of the mayor, discipline all assistants, subordinates, and other employees. Does that, you're saying that the mayor could prevent the department head from disciplining uh, a line worker that uh, really should fall within the, in my mind, should fall within the purview of the department that the mayor should Line page three, line twelve. I'll tell you why that's there. I mean, a lot of department heads don't understand progressive discipline, and since this is a civil service city, and this potential litigation is come up to the mayor anyway, so you can, if you can prevent that from happening before it happens, I guess the word consent is what is jumping. Yeah, it's jumping subject to, to the consent of the mayor. In other words, the mayor has to allow you to do it. And that's a strong word. Is there a word that the mayor should be advised? The advice of the mayor. Or something along that line. Consent. Approval. So approval is the word is consent. I'm I'm just yeah. trying to make sure that the mayor certainly knows that this person is about to get a written warning. But it's just subject to notice. You want something stronger. You feel with your history of dealing with towns, it should be stronger. I'm just I just feel I mean, this whole area is so uh, litigious mm -hmm. that you know you don't want people going off. That don't understand how to do this stuff. Yeah, just they, they, they shouldn't be a department head. If they shouldn't be a department head if they don't know how to do it. I mean, you're talking department heads. You're, in my mind, you, that's a high level supervisory position. And a notice of the mayor means that the note of the mayor is being fully advised. And but the department head, are we giving that department head the ability to supervise their own staff, or is that now the mayor? a person in, within that department. Well, I, would, I would hope there's, there's, a, there's a human resources department in this city right. that has policies on all this stuff and how this is done. But this is just kind of belt and suspenders to say, you know, I'm a mayor, I appoint you as the town head, and I just want to make sure that if you're going to fire somebody or you're going to suspend somebody, I need to at least know about it. Maybe not consent. I mean, I don't have a problem with, with, with Soften consent. Well, you're, but you're not saying hire and fire, you're saying discipline. Yes. I mean, that's much broader than hiring and fire. Correct. It's written warning or suspension. So if we could just flag that word, and I'll let Steve come back with something different. But uh, I really want to move on. And, and Tom, if you, if you have any suggestions or anybody else in the committee have suggestions, I'm uncomfortable with that as well.
Yeah. Other comments, Mark? Yeah, me too. This has like micromanaging here. Yeah. I didn't work with the mayor. I have to go and approve every every promotion. So I would think like about the human resources just for the for the department head to just make sure the human resources uh, it goes in their file. And you know, I don't see what the mayor would even have unless it's gonna be fired and it was gonna be a problem, maybe then advise the mayor. But other than that, I mean it's in the, any business is you don't go to the president of the company and say, hey, I'm firing John Smith down here. It's just there's a change of command. And this may be, I mean, this is a civil service city. Whether the city's falling in law or not, I don't know. But again, that's well, where, the, where the HR and the, and the city attorney might be advised, where the mayor would be told of this is going down. But again, to have them intricately involved in it needs, to me, is micromanaging. And it's a matter of, as, mm -hmm. as Tom pointed out, it's, it's the department head. And I've got full faith in, in the department heads to be able to discipline in supervise their own employees and have the mayor have the ability to step in, which this gives them, means that the mayor is now supervising hundreds of employees directly, which makes me really uncomfortable. I would, I would suspect that the mayor is the appointing authority for the police and fire department, which are the two biggest departments. And the mayor has to consent to all discipline and all promotion and all hiring. In the police and fire? If, yes. But then, in terms of, I would have, uh, again, I have no desire to be mayor, but if I were mayor, <laughs> I would want um, the HR person to fully keep me informed of the issues that are popping up on the agenda, which could be litigious, but I don't necessarily want to be intricately part of the decision-making process. So this makes them, your language makes them in the room when the decision is being made as to what to do, I think he, he or she should be informed and kept up to speed, but that to me is a procedure within the HR and mayor's office, not necessarily within the charter. But that's yeah, okay. the flip side of that is that uh, the department head wants to, has a legitimate reason for terminating someone and uh, is unable to do so because the mayor refuses to give consent. That's what, that was the scenario I was thinking of, right, that the mayor could protect an employee. Also, just by the same thing, to undermine the department head, the department, it's tough to get good people for these jobs. And if you start undermining people, they're going to say, I'll go to Stanford, Connecticut, or I'll go to Boylston. So I, I so we, we've red flagged this area that needs to be cleaned up. And the only other thing in here that's, that what, what, what this prevents is holdovers on boards and commissions. If, you, if your term expires, the mayor has to either reappoint you or appoint somebody else. Mm -hmm. No holdovers. Because holdovers is just, it's a political ploy to keep you from you know, under the mayor's thumb. Yes. So yeah. that, this, this prevents that. All right, so we're up to temporary appointments. Can you do that in three minutes? Temporary yes. appointments, the only provision we have here is, again, just like the holdover thing. You don't want the mayor to keep the people in temporary appointments forever uh, because they don't want to go to the city council for confirmation. So that limits it to 30 days with two 30-day extensions. That's 90 days. That's enough time to recruit somebody. Um, this is more, more standard stuff. And how the mayor vetoes things and how the mayor can call a special meeting city council. Okay, but we'll come back to from section 3.5 on yeah. um, next meeting, if that's okay. Okay. But just so put that on the agenda, Mary, and we'll, we'll come back to that. I take um, uh, Bill's point that we should spend some time on the website, which I think Todd brought up, and the um, uh, public hearing portion of it. And we've had uh, some emails go out about what's available, what's not available, and we've had a date set for the public hearing. So let's get some comments going on that. Anybody? Bill? Well, I think we need to, you know, we, it's, it's okay. going to be a tough task to get the word out about it, mm -hmm. essentially between election day and the 15th. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's doable, but I just want to make sure we're not, you know, get surprised it's like two days before the thing and we figure out we got to get the word out somehow. Um, so I would think uh, we want to do you know, a bunch of different things. Mm -hmm. um, we, we could uh, send out a press release 
to all print, radio, and TV, postmarkcaptainmedia.com. We could sign a joint letter to the Gazette, um, calling people to come. Uh, those of us who have social media platforms on Facebook and Twitter uh, could try to employ those. Um, we should probably tap uh, the email list of the city councilors, neighborhood associations, uh, a PTO, uh, I don't know if the senior center has them, the unions have them. Um, uh, I feel about other ideas of other organizations that might be willing to spread the word. Uh, so, you know, those that association like uh, grocery association. Yeah, well, uh, so and that and so that's all sort of the medium I think you want to hit. And then there's the question of how how do you want to sell it? If we sell it as over an overly dry thing, no one's gonna show. You know, we probably I would my like, opinion is you wanna pull out, you know, three hot button things and then maybe have an ad on saying and more and whatever you want to talk about. But you know, you know, should the mayor uh, you know uh, have term limits, uh, should uh, should the word line be read on it? I'm not saying that cities have to do things, but some of that's really going to get. I mean, I think the issues of executive power in general, I think people are a little, you know, interested in. So I think you want to hit that at minimum. Uh, and and so if, if if we if we hit that and get the word through all those different meetings, then hopefully we could fill this room. Other ideas. I'm going to break this into to several portions, but this is the portion of publicizing the event. Other suggestions around publicizing the event? I think even like if the Gazette, not just the, us doing a letter, but even if they did a couple of stories up to that, just mm -hmm. saying that, you know, this, this is going to affect the future of your children and your grandchildren and down the road for who knows how long. If you want something to say or you've got something to say about and you can run roughly some of the subjects we're going to talk about, so that, you know, make it a front page thing. Uh, Bob Flaherty does those articles all the time, and they're great articles. It's just to create the interest so that, you know, maybe people will come. It's, if they feel they've got a, something that's going to be vested in it. No, that's, I mean, I mean, that's what the press release should do. You don't want it to be a calendar listing thing. Hey, for me in Hampshire. Well, like a little story about right. what, what's happening You want, right you want to spell out, this is what I think the story is, right. and you should tell your readers that big stuff's going to be happening here, and, they, and, and, and they're going to want to get involved. And this is what, this is what the big stuff is. Absolutely. I think you have some opportunity if you have uh, notice that uh, polling stations will be seeing a lot of Hampton people, you know, on the 8th. So making sure that there's posters up at the senior center wherever people are voting. Thank you, Bill's comment about uh, making sure it's not too dry because I think your average citizen talk about a charter drafting committee. Um, they're not going to be interested, so you know, there's hot button issues that you want to step on to create some buzz. I think it's fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're here. <laughs> you probably like fishing too. <laughs>
okay, we're going to talk about the man's turn. And, you know, and again, most people say, keep it at church, keep it, you know, they'll just say it. You know, <laughs> there's really no reason for it. They'll just, they'll just say it. Um, but someone's going to say, well, here are the pros and here are the cons. And that's your, that's your job. And that's your, you know, I mean, I just, I just think throwing stuff out that people don't understand. Yeah. It's not an informed discussion. Mm -hmm. That was Mark's idea last time. Have right. a little, you know, many speeches that have to be short. You know, but uh, mm -hmm. so we get sort of basic pros and cons to kick things off. But it would require that we would take those roles, that we would have to prepare something. You know, and, but I think that it would help because it would provide that informed right. discussion. Now, again, this is a structured environment as opposed to a typical public hearing where we all sit there and wait for the next person to stand up at the mic and they talk about this and then the next person talks about that. This is going to be a structured discussion right now, just like we're doing here. Right now, we want to get public opinion on the mayor. Okay? Next, we're going to get public opinion on the city council. So it's going to be, so people aren't jumping all over the ballpark. It's going to be a very structured flow, flowed agenda, if you will. It's going to be a very technical it will, it will, it might push some people's buttons because the question then is how do we make sure we have time and everybody gets a fair shot and what happens if we have three people lined up and the clock is ticked and we've got to move on to city council but there are two, three more people on mayor. How do we play that out? I would also think some people might feel constrained by that sort of structure. They want to just get up and say their three minutes worth. And, and I'm, I'm wondering, you know, unless we get an overflow low crowd, whether it would be possible to accommodate people that want to get up and talk about things that are off topic or important to them before we move on to this structured debate. You can do it before or after. Before or after, You can do yeah. 15 up front, you can do 15 at the end. What do we, what do we not get to? And give, give your chance to give your, your two cents. Exactly. We have a, a portion of the agenda after we run through the bullet points of other comments you want to make where people would then have the ability to add in there, but we're going to stay with the structured environment for the first part, but then have a free-for-all conclusion, wrap-up, whatever. You mean about all of it? Any, anything. They could, they could go back and talk about the mayor piece again because it didn't get made, or they could talk about um, something else that wasn't even covered on the list. I, I see a lot of people's hands. I'll start with Tom and then back to Red. In my mind, just listening to to our group, I mean, every, we all have a little bit different perspective, different emphasis, things that uh, we pick up on and add to the discussion. I would I, I throw out whether it would be appropriate to have somebody gets up, they have, they have a discussion, and then uh, whoever feels like commenting on it, comment, as opposed to saying that uh, I'm going to give pros and cons on one thing, somebody else is going to give pros and cons on something else. I mean, we could have a, a general opening like that, with, and maybe with with uh, the moderator doing that, uh, because you, you seem to have a good grasp of a lot of these, these issues and, and take a balanced approach. Let people speak, and then have us uh, comment on it, whoever feels like it. And not everyone's going to comment on every speaker. Well, just, just a way of doing it. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree totally. And you could, in the first person, or the first bullet point, you can kind of engage them to get them to make their PowerPoint back. And then if want, some of us want to join in, just like you said, I think that's a great idea. In other words, you're going to have to start the meeting somehow, right? right. I mean, they're not going to get up unless right. they know, right? So once they get started, they can ask, you know, ask questions and then we could answer them. Yep. I don't know how you feel about that. Yep. Maybe make the question a lot longer than it should be. Yeah, I hear you. Mark and then Tom. Um, you know, maybe this is premised also in the idea that you would get a full house, and I'm not sure that's a fair premise. When we did this last year, we got two people, and I think that was your experience that you mentioned before, that unless you really are going to present it as something's going to happen, you know, at this meeting, I, I just don't see how it's, well, at least the past experience suggests it's not going to attract the crowd. Maybe in that case, you know, I mean, we had two people. It wasn't really all that well, informative. How good was your advertising? Well, I mean, obviously, that's an issue. Yeah. Um, I think Bill's idea is, is, is appropriate. I mean, you've got to get the press involved, and you've got to make them make an issue out of it. They have to make it as, as news. But I wonder if it's also, um, and that will make a difference. Clearly, that it wasn't something that had the, the exposure that I, I hope I would like to see. But um, 
But I, I still think it might be more helpful, again, to get to, not just to provide informed discussion, but in order to attract people, that, you know, there will be a, a, a debate, something that's structured, and maybe even a vote afterwards, not obviously binding on the charter, but something that says, look, here's why it might be really interesting and kind of cool to show up. And if, you know, if that's something that we could do, obviously it would take a little bit more effort on our part, but, you know. Up until the, the vote part, the, the only reason is that I want a chance to process what people say. I don't want to vote right then. I want to oh, think about yeah, it. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Mary, help me out here. Yeah. I just want to remind the committee that for open meeting law, if you want to take a vote, that has to be on the agenda. Thank you. Okay. Well, I thought you meant a consensus of the people. Oh, no, I wasn't talking about a vote of us. Oh, okay. No, no, so that's not okay. a vote of, of the rest yeah, of us. Yeah, I took a stroll. Yeah. 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 Okay, no, that's cool. I just, uh, um, that I don't have a problem with. Uh, having us get on the spot made me a little nervous. I'm not sure if we're getting us to get a cross section of the city <laughs> in the room so that they can be straight up. Nerds are us. <laughs> well, when's that support group being well, scheduled well, to say? Did you pick up on that point? Yeah. I mean, the people that may show up here are the people that have been previously involved or currently involved in Northampton politics. Former mayors, former councilors, present city councilors. They'll at least they'll, they'll, they'll know the issues. But I'm wondering if that's who's going to show up. I would hope so. Just like Red, Red when he, he did his you know, informal discussions, found out lots of information as to why we did things certain ways. You know, the 10 of us don't have all that information. It would be very helpful to to have historically, you know, Dave and Sandy's not coming back, but hopefully Mary Ford will come and say, this is why we did it this way, you know? And uh, Todd? Well, my comment sort of follows on that. If we get former mayors, council people up here, it'd be nice to pick their brains. Yeah. Um, and so I, I'm trying to imagine how this would play out. We'd have sort of the, the, the issues that we've identified. Right. You could make an introduction about, you know, the various options and to invite comment then, and we could then Ask questions as well of, of the witnesses or of the people that are speaking. Are we in that ballpark, Megan? That was my question too. What kind of experts are we going to provide for these questions that are going to come up that we, in the room here, don't know the answers to necessarily? I don't well, think it should be just a question to that meeting. I mean, you can take it down, but I don't think it should be back and forth a debate with the audience. Uh, that's dangerous. I think. Why? I mean, because you know, because how do you control that? How do you control the, you know, the, 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 uh, the debate? Well, we, and we're, we're not a unified body. We don't right. we have voted anything. We don't have official positions. We could be arguing amongst ourselves. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but that, 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 that gets to me to all of, of, of a voting piece. And if somebody stands up and says they want to do term limits, and then I counter, well, no, I don't want to vote for term limits. Well, that's, it, I don't want to get to that level. I want them. It wasn't so much that as if, 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 uh, may, if someone stood up and said, you know, I've got 20 years of experience and I'm in favor of term limits. Yeah. Thank you very much. I want to say, well, why are you in favor of term limits? Right. Oh, no, I don't, I don't mind playing devil's yeah, advocate. Yeah, I don't mind just that piece of it, the role I've sort of played okay. here. Right. But I would also just not want to show all my cards at this point in time until I've had a chance to kind of reflect on what people said. And uh, I think that's, I want that to be more thoughtful, for at least my point of view, a more thoughtful process than a quick random, yeah, I agree with you, you know, I don't want to get to that. I think if you put the questions, I mean, somehow put the, put, put the questions out to the public, what's going to happen is people who have a vested interest in the decision are going to show up. Right. If you're going to say, we're, gonna, we're thinking of changing the composition of the school committee, the school committee will show up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I've seen it, you know. If you're going to change, uh, city clerk. City clerk. If we're going to, if that, city clerk be a She's going to have to pack the room. Well, then that's kind of what we want. We that's, do want people in the okay. audience, and we ought to sort of put everything on the table. And, and again, that's where I think expanding on this list through next time and then having that part of the article, these are the areas that we want your input on, that we want you to comment on. And then we have the period at the end where people could comment on anything you know, that they that we did address in that period of time. Is that a ballpark of where we're at? Yes, I would just say we did talk about having a second public meeting. Yes. So, it, so I just think whatever um, publicity goes out, we want to be sure and help people. Because I've actually been approached about issues that we haven't even started in on here yet. But just so that people understand this is part A, and then we'll be talking about part B. You know, so they can save those thoughts for another meeting. Right. The, the, my recollection of that second meeting was more of here's where we're going for an outcome before we take a final vote. Do you have any okay. twists on that okay. as opposed to a second?
second set of questions. A second set of content. Okay. I, that's just sort of where I'm at, but the longer this gets, the more I can see another <laughs> whole second set of content yeah. coming out of this group. All right. Yeah, Mary. Uh, I just I see a conflict here in that our next meeting is for the ninth. Yes. Um, City Hall's closed on the eleventh, so technically I have to literally publish the public hearing agenda on the ninth. That during the day, in other words, because I have to give the public forty-eight hours notice. Okay. So, I mean, I could put an agenda out that there's a public hearing, but not actually put what the questions exactly. Okay. I, I think that's okay if, if you know officially. We can still unofficially put forth certain questions in our press materials and right. emails and so forth. I'm just watching your eyes for open meeting law a, I issues. I think the city clerk would tell us that's a conflict of open meeting law. Because if you know you're going to ask those three questions on the agenda, you've got to put them on the agenda. Right, well, and say, when you publish it, can you publish it after the meeting? Uh, on the 8th, or you have to publish it during the daytime? On the 9th, I would have to publish it during the day. So day. you need to have that list tonight. Well, if we wait till the night, if, if, because Monday's a day, you need three days, 48 you have, hours, 48, 48 hours, you have hours Thursday and you have Monday, and you have all day Tuesday, because the hearing's not until the evening, so you're still within the law, if we were to publish this Wednesday by mid-afternoon, you have all day business Thursday, all day business Monday. That's, that gets you your 48 hours. Am I wrong in my interpretation? No, that's right. Is okay. the, open, the open meeting law says that well, it's, it's changed in the last couple of years. It's gone uh -huh. drastic. But, I mean, isn't it you have to have the agenda published for a, for a governmental body, not for a public hearing? No, but we're covered by open meeting laws. Yes, we no, 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 no. The open, no, I'm saying a public hearing. Does a public hearing have to have an agenda? Or is it just a governmental body? I don't know the answer to the question, but I'm just raising it. So, uh, are we talking a public hearing in the sense of, uh, I mean, this isn't a public hearing for us to, to make a decision. This is just a public hearing to gather information. Correct. So, and, so I don't know if we're talking a violation of the open meeting law if we don't have all of our questions because we're not going to be voting on those questions. Correct. It's just a matter of topics to be discussed. Correct. Potential topics. A potential list of topics to be discussed would include, but not limited to the following. Boom. Executive, uh, legislative executive school committee. Okay. Is that, are you comfortable with that, man? Or these are, these are the issues that, uh, that we are considering. Should this, right. should that. And, as opposed to and that as the, a question. the public is, re is referred to the charter, which can be found on this website, to review for other potential areas that they would like to bring up. This is their form to do that. Are we at the ballpark? And so we're usually seeking. we always end with re new business reserved for topics the chair right. is not reasonable. Right. Okay. Okay. We all there? So we're just we're seeking public input. Yeah. Um, yes. public and the, the format will be that again we'll give a, a brief comment as to why we're here, what we're doing, what we hope to accomplish. We're going to take them section by section, ask people to talk within that section, not jump sections on it. We'll, we'll come up with those sections next time. Um, we'll get the public comment on that. Um, there might be some cross talk, but we're not trying to debate or influence. We're just trying to gather information. And um, that will get us to the next piece. Is that sort of wrap? And then we finish with that. The, the, is there anything else that people would like to add at this point in time? Now, Mary, just because we're scheduled from 6.30 to 9.30, we, we're not, 9.30, we don't have to absolutely drop dead other than the fact that I fall asleep. And you're also being taller. Yes. The, you think about the ratings. <laughs> uh, another consideration is do we characterize it as a public hearing or something else? Good point. And I think that's a very, very good point. Or a public, public comment session? Yeah.
Yeah. They call it a public forum. Public forum. That's a good term. People comfortable with that? Public forum. Thank you. All right. Now we get down to the press release piece of it. Joint letter to the Gazette, social media platforms. You didn't think I wrote these down, did you? Um, out to all the different uh, email lists, city council, PTO, etc. An article in the Gazette that actually talks, a detailed article in the Gazette that actually talks about things, and posters at different polling places. Given our staff person is busy as she possibly can be, I'm looking for help from the membership to pick one of those areas and say, I will take care of this. I can take care of PR stuff. Okay. Since that's what you do. Right. And, and, and I would use my own Facebook and Twitter platforms okay, as well. And you would send them out to whoever needs to happen. So when you talk about doing the press, what are we talking about? Well, um, I'm happy to, to write a press release mm -hmm. uh, for others to, to yeah. that, of course. Yeah. Um, I'm happy to draft one for the editor. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a media list so I can, I can get it to whoever. Print, print, radio, TV, etc. And now, if we're gonna, if we're gonna pitch, we have more, I think there's a good chance to get HMP. Mm -hmm. um, maybe FCR, less likely TV. Um, I would think if someone's gonna go on on the radio, TV would be you. Mm -hmm. um, I understand that. Not thrilled. I understand that. If you didn't want to do it and want to put it to someone else, obviously we talk about. Well, you and I talked about, about this before. He feels it should be the chair, and I get that. I lose 20 pounds before we go on TV. <laughs> <laughs> this is the narrow lens, right? <laughs> uh, but I'd be happy to call HMP and say, hey, we will thank you. Okay. Thank you. I would, would look for your help on that. All right. Um, thank you. So if, if we don't mind, Bill, start taking the lead on that, put something together for us that you can circulate via email so we all have a chance to vet it, and then we move forward on that as we need to look for a timeline as well, mm -hmm. given that the 15th is three weeks away. Right. Um, other people want to pick off any piece of that? I did hear posters. I would put that together once there was a press release so okay. I could really see what the main content Okay, the, the, then you would have to get to her sooner. Yeah, that's so we could, no worries. Yeah. And I would, I would think that we could hand that out with Wendy, if you check with Wendy, mm -hmm. that you don't have to drive all around the city. Uh-huh, okay. I did bring you could it to Wendy. Bring it to the, so that it would be part of their packets. So wow. this would be like a flyer that we take to the walls or, or something. Or something. Yeah. But check with Wendy just to make sure that's okay. politically okay to do, yeah. that we're not stepping on anybody's toes. Right. Um, on that one. If, right. if, if it can't, I'll take them and deliver them okay. wherever they need to be okay. delivered. But I would get yeah. big. I mean, yeah. little stuff gets lost, especially during an election. Get something big and colorful that attracts attention. But I'll, if okay. you don't want to do the Wendy route, I'll let, I'll let the two of you work on, on that piece of it, if you would, Maddie and Matt. Other areas of PR, once we get the press release, it will obviously go out to us. We would want to make sure that um, we'll, I'll work with Mary on making sure it gets out to the school committee, select board, and as part of your broadcast, Mary, if that's okay. Um, which is only a couple clicks for you, but the rest of you would have to deal with your local social media. Obviously, we'd want Ward 3 to pay attention. Association and I uh, want to just say North. there's a conflict that that's the night of Ward 3 and for the association's meeting. Oops. <laughs> okay. Uh, could you, Jerry's, Jerry's, Butker is still chair of that? Yes, I'm actually the secretary. Okay, can you have a conversation with Jerry about that? I will. Okay. Just to say sorry, but yeah. is there a way that they could change their date or? or something else. Would they, they like to come? Bring them here. <laughs> that, that would make sure we have a couple bodies in the room. I think we're going to be packed, but let's see. Uh, crazy. Mark, Red. Just one more thing about what we could offer is that, you know, can we, while we're having these questions up, or if we're not going to be holding a, you know, our own sort of effort of debate, but in order to provide that informed discussion, I mean, we've gone over these issues now. We have a couple of dot points we could write on both sides of every issue. Can we put that together for the 15th so that when the issue came up, should the city council make up change, that we'd have you know, just a very clear dot point table of here's one way of looking at it, here's another way of looking at it. 
that part, portion has not escaped me, and I was actually, in my mind, kicking that down to the eighth uh, for our meeting to discuss of how we're going to handle each of those individual points. Because I want to see the rest of the list that the have eighth, come. The ninth. The ninth. Sorry, okay. the, re the the ninth meeting on Wednesday, um, uh, and then how we do that piece of it. Okay. You know, I don't want this to be all David talking. I do like the piece that pieces would be farmed out. Okay, so. I might be doing the MC and overall piece of it, but Mark, let's talk about the role of the mayor, some of the pros and cons you've heard, some of the areas of the discussion, then ask for public comment. That's sort of where I was thinking about it, but again, I wanted to process it a little bit in my head. Okay. Does that make sense? All right, so let's just kick that to our next meeting. Put that on the agenda, if you would. Um, uh, now, let's just do a reality check with, with our facilitator here. Um, where are we in this process? You're about, you're about half. Okay. The, the, I think, you know, the other, the, the, the articles on, on financial and administrative procedures is pretty dry. It's, it's pretty routine. I don't think there's going to be a lot of debate on, you know, whether the mayor should submit the budget 45 days or 50 days before and all that stuff. I mean, that's probably what's mostly routine. I think the next thing that's going to come up is going to be, there's going to, um, you know, it's going to cause a little bit of more discussion is elections. In, in elections, you really can't touch much, but you can get rid of preliminary elections if you wanted to. Um, and um, and then the recall referendum initiative petition and, and petition free petition provisions tend to spark some discussion. But that's about it. I mean, it's, it's you're, you're making great progress right now. So just so to right. bring that back to the public hearing. Yeah. Of I happen to know that one of the counselors is kind of just a runoff voting. And there's a certain constituency that gets really excited about the process of the runoff voting. Proportion representation, you mean? No, you could, you, you could um, you'd vote for multiple people in ranked order. Your yes, yes, preference yes. voting, yeah. Right. And that came up in some of them, the whole crowd that really pushes right. that right. stuff. Right, I'm sorry. <laughs> it, could, it could be bait <laughs> for people to come to the forum, is what I'm saying. If you, if you put that as one of the things to be, to be debated, whether we haven't debated ourselves yet. Right. I guess that's a good point. Is it going to be possible for us at the next meeting to, to get through the real hot button issues so that we can you know, make sure that we've got everything on our list? That we want, that we know we're going to get feedback on. Feedback. I mean, to me, it's recall, it's not how you do the recall, it's a matter of should there be recall or not. Uh, referendum, it's this is the current place we're at. Should it be tightened or loosened? Should it be easier to put a referendum question on the ballot? And what's the other one? Referendum and yeah, uh, initiative, initiative petition. You know, I mean, that's to me is, is you know. What, what, for, it's, it's the question whether you want it or not. And then the question is, you want to, to frame, do you want to make it easy or do you want to make it hard? You don't want frivolous. <coughs> you don't want running people every now and, and then. You don't people. want. You got to. It's got to be. It's got to be hard, but not impossible. Right. And you know, I have the numbers at work. You know, but uh, so we hired. Then we kind of. Then we kind of like stop any you know uh, people from putting a referendum on every you know six days or something because we need you know, hundred signatures or something. You know? um, it's hard. It's hard to do, and it should be hard to do. Sure. But I guess my point is, are we going to be able, by the next meeting, go through the outlines and be able to sort of pick out these sort of key issues that I think the, the public is going to want well, to Well, what I would suggest is that you go through your notes from the first two meetings. I think uh, Mary's done a great job of, of minutes. Um, and make sure that you have your list. We'll compare it with the list that Mary puts forward. If you see others that need to be there or wording changes that are here, then I would suggest that you make sure you bring those forward next time on the 9th. Um, and of the remaining uh, topics, and again, he's done a great outline of to where we need to go, generate some of those questions. You know, here we might not talk amongst ourselves about the referendum process, but we know there needs to be a referendum point made. And we will spend probably at the two-hour period, I would assume that we're in the under-hour, half-hour range to, to get more of the book done and then spend the last hour and a half, 90 minutes, if you will, making sure we have the questions correct and that we have the agenda worked out. Is that a good scheme for next time? 
So we'll do about a half hour on the book, and then about an hour and a half on the um, making sure that the 15 works correctly. We're there? Okay. Mary, did you get all that? I, I sometimes just rattle too fast. <laughs> It was easier when she sat here, and then she kind of gave me looks. That's all the way over there. I don't get to see her. Okay. Any other business to become before this body at this time? Is this the time we meant to um, conclude? I think some of us are brain dead. But uh, would you like to add anything? I just want to follow up quickly on the blog. Yes. Oh, there's thank something you. We can I keep thinking there's something else. Like <laughs> thank you very much. I will please take that off and run with it. Um, well, I, I'll, I'll defer to people who are more involved with social media, but as I said last meeting, I, I thought it might facilitate public input for people who can't make it to the meeting. Um, I understand the city can't do it because of the public record um, issue. I think there's also an issue of having to moderate. If we have a blog, and guys built, if you've got a blog, you're going to have to moderate to keep the spam off, which I'm sure would create some First Amendment issues for the city. But if Mary, you had said that it would be possible for one of us to set something up. Is, is Not through the city. Not through the city, but no. just independently. Um, I'd be happy to do that if we could sort of agree on the rules for moderating it um, and, and what, what, it, what it's there for. I mean, is, is there, I mean, I'm for aggressive moderation when you, it's, yeah. it's time. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to go in, I mean, there, there are certain softwares that are good spam blocking, and I'm, and I'm not a technical guy, so I couldn't quite steer you there, but. Um, trying to, on the presumption people actually come to the block yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, those yeah. comments, which is the presumption. Um, you want to make sure that things don't get totally out of hand, that you believe stuff that's outright spammy or, or effective, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. Uh, Let, let's, let's start with, hold on to the how to, why to, okay? We're going to ask people to submit public comment. We're going to, uh, as part of this, if you can't make the 15th, we'd cer certainly still like your forms to come in. Please submit them in written form to Mary. Um, we're, they're going to know what the list of questions are. Uh, the reason we're having them do it that way, and Mary, would that include your email, or would that they have to send you a hard copy? Uh, what I put on the city webpage that I created was they could email me, they could okay. deliver it in person, they could mail it in, okay. in any form. So we have the people who can't physically or don't have the time to come someplace or want to mail it, they can electronically send it, which is, to me is the same as a web page. So I'm just wondering. I think the, the why for me is, is uh, a large part optics to try to encourage people to offer input and then to interact with each other. Um, the, the question I have is what role would, would we have on this blog, aside from sort of posting the agenda and these hot button issues? But it's more to allow the community to have a discussion, which I think in our public meetings, there's not going to be a place for that sort of discussion. So a blog would allow commentators, people who want to you know, engage in this, to do so in a, in a, uh, in a web space. The, the only question I would have about one of us doing it, as opposed to Paradise City or somebody else picking it up and running with it, is that it looks like it's sanctioned by us. which. To me, opens up that, are we in or out of open meeting law? How are we recording all this? How are we capturing this? Do I think this is an official site because your name's on it? And that that's going to be officially reported back to me? How do you censor it with First Amendment issues? There are just too many what ifs, what ifs, what ifs, what ifs that make me nervous. No, I, I understand that. Those are, yeah. those are all valid questions. And, but and, and it, it's a matter of... For this forum, I would prefer to have people do it that way. Then th there's already going to be people already talking in the blogs about this. If it's, if it's a hot button issue, somebody's going to get on there and say, you know, uh, we call position for the mayor, or the, you know, should have gotten rid of this mayor a long time ago, or whatever. That we're only going to start that discussion. I'm just not sure the amount of time and energy you're going to put into that is going to bear the amount of fruit that we're looking versus the, the door that we have over here. And if we have competing ways, and I do see them as competition, um, as opposed to an augmentation, that way captures everything publicly that we need to capture and plays within the rules of the game. This way opens up a lot of, ooh, are we are playing right over here. You know, I, I, I understand, you know, having to, I understand those issues. It was more, again, you know, trying to, 
sort of push that transparency I, issue well, yeah, I, to I, encourage I, discussion. I think part of the problem is writing a letter, you know, to someone. It just doesn't have that same um, satisfying feel that you have having a conversation or commenting on someone else's. Okay, so my question, please. How many of us are on Facebook? That's not bad. <laughs> uh, I, I find, I mean, the people who, who are involved in social media during is not a majority in the first place. So let's not pretend that you can reach everybody through it because you can't. It's kind of like, like a tank. Um, but to the point of optics, that you're, tr you're trying to do as much as you possibly can, trying to hit every nook and cranny of the city. Um, I found that Northampton is predominantly a Facebook town. It's not really a Twitter town. It's not really a blog town. Um, so if you're creating a website of whole cloth, you've got to get them there. You've got to make someone go to your site. And that's, that's easy. That's hard for any, any blog. There are people who are on Facebook every day just in their daily life. So it might be easier for us in our own, in our own spaces to say, hey, I'm going to the charter review committee tonight. You know, what do you want me to talk about? I'm going to talk, we're going to talk about this tonight. What's your, what's your view? So that it, it, I don't think it has any kind of pressure of being a committee thing. I don't think it buzzes no, on people. Um, and I still think it serves the optics of saying, hey, we're out there. We're trying to get public input for every possible meeting yeah, that we can. No different than Richard talking to three or four city councils and us talking to our neighbors. Right. That's not the issue. But when we, if we were to have that, it just, it, it's one step more that makes me nervous. Now I'm against it, it just makes me nervous. Mark, you're looking frowning. What do you think? Oh, I, I, this isn't my area. Okay. But I don't see why it would hurt. I, you know, I mean, if you can get, if you can identify what is going to be a hot button and what's going to have a lot of opposition, you know, that might help us to recognize, you know, what could, you know, be a fatal issue on the charter. Um, but I also think, you know, maybe these other forums, the Paradise City one, I, I you know, I'm not really, you know, a history of these, I don't really know. But it, Tom, yeah. Maddie, Megan? Not, not what I know anything about. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think um, the blog, I think, is much more like this forum. I just don't want us to get tripped up, you know, when I look at value versus getting, you know, somebody thought that that comment that was posted there came back to the committee, but it was never in our official report, and then, you know, it, it, it just makes me nervous, and, uh... Yeah, then you're guilty, and no matter what you say, well, it's... No, I, I could see that people could ask questions that are off topic, and you have to answer them, or if you don't answer them, people are going to get upset, because they're not getting feedback. And this is a, you know, this is a formal, the, the charter is a formal document, and we have a formal process to collect information. We're going to have a hearing and we're going to have emails and, and letters that are going to come into Mary. And, and I'm for transparency and I'm for openings. And maybe part of that goes back to Maddie's point about the second hearing. And um, But at this point in time, I, it, I'm nervous about it. Even the public that doesn't come, I mean, how they could speak. I mean, let's say it was five people who had something that we were talking about tonight. They, they would have the opportunity to join us absolutely, in the conversation. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I prefer that. I'd like to look at the people who I'm talking to. I'm not some mysterious John Doe and I give you a list. Because people talk differently. You're going you're, you know, you're to write me a letter. You don't know me. You're going to say things you might not if you look at me in the eye. I get lots of email. Well, so, but you know what I'm saying. I know, I know exactly what you're saying. I, I'm just amazed that, you know, because of the importance of this, and I find this is amazing, this is really, really important. Even Dave Reed didn't even show up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess Not Dave. I was, this, whole sort of, this whole discussion was, was launched, I guess, when Maddie made a comment, is it going to be babysitting right. you know, at the forum? And it, it, there are a lot of people that can't make these meetings. Yeah, they're shut in, you know, they've got small children. It was just more trying to figure out some way to sort of reach out. I don't get it. It's also a debate tonight. A mayor or a oh, okay. What's up, that's every one of you. Make up your mind already. <laughs> <laughs> Was there anything else from your list? Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. No. no. How would you do that? What? Uh, we we put it all on Bill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to hand the whole media. A couple of you volunteered for posters, and uh, we're okay. Um, thank you. Uh, I don't think this is that dry, but uh, I do appreciate you all hanging in today and uh, moving forward. Um,
Mary, thank you for putting up with all of this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, motion to adjourn. Uh, second.